Hello YouTube and welcome to Ground Forks Plays Transport Fever. This is episode 8 of our playthrough of the USA campaign. And as you can see, we are following one of our Klondikes. I don't know actually which one. We are continuing roughly where we left off in the previous episode. So, uh, we have built some bridges and now it's time for our cities to start growing. So. Let's quickly examine our vehicles. They seem to be pretty good shape, upgraded, except for maybe the Houston to Savannah, but that one hasn't been using the latest and greatest tech. So let me just quickly examine. Uh, we have a bunch of moguls which are running wood to Savannah. I was just worried that I didn't have somewhere the general, but I think I retired it a while back. It has been a while since I recorded the last episode, so sorry about that. Okay, Memphis, which is clearly our main hub, from which we have trains going to New Haven, St. Petersburg and Allentown. And we have here a train waiting, because another one needed to clear the signal, okay. Okay, well, it's continuing to chug merrily along its merry way, okay. As you can see, we have 13.2 millions in the bank, which is definitely a welcome feature. And we are more or less debt free, which is also a fantastic feeling. So let's examine New Haven, St. Petersburg, and we have built also docks in St. Petersburg. As you can see, our trains are, you know, doing a hefty amount of work. New Haven Forest has been upgraded, so its production has been steadily climbing, which means we will need to also find a supply, because yes, we are supplying two towns with tools, but we will need to find a better and richer source of supply. So I'm thinking even maybe supplying tools to New Haven via the actually the trains coming back. Maybe that would be a better choice. Just upgrade the station, add one more, and then use road vehicles to connect it. That's one thing to think about, but for the time being, I want to first make another mogul and a couple of more cars because I want to deliver simply more wood. Now, once this uh, thing is double tracked, we don't need to worry about, you know, queues and stuff. And we have signals along the whole route, so I think it should be fine. So we might as well take a new train and just happily continue chugging along, increasing the capacity. There we go. Yet another mogul. Okay. So that one should hopefully start picking up the rest of the wood that we have here and also continue delivering which should result in higher production chains once down the line meaning going to uh, increase production in planks and then finally in the tools we just have to be very careful to make sure that the tools don't end up waiting somewhere which they aren't so far so yeah most of our problems is that the wood has been waiting on the station here as you can see that's the major queue up. Oh, and we have some tools which are being held up there, but I have a feeling my Klondike will come presently to pick them up. So, and another one is still coming. Okay. New Haven Station. That's the one that I'm a little bit worried about. At some point down the line, I will need to replace it. But it is in the city. The only thing that I made a mistake is to make it a terminal station, which means wait, I will need to find a way how to do something else with it. Uh, that being said, I'm thinking of uh, installing yet another train, actually, because we have a lot of passengers at both Memphis and New Haven, so maybe one more express train would be handy. One that could have have a higher capacity and to do that I am actually thinking considering either to take the mogul or to take the brand new 442 Atlantic 
I think Atlantic might be actually better in order, so... Let's see... Maybe we will just upgrade one of the... one of the present trains. Okay, shall we take the Atlantic? Yes, we shall. And what type of cars? I think those are much more expensive, so I might actually opt for these ones. Yeah, I don't think you need latest and greatest, you just need enough of them. So yeah, I clearly have the cash for it, so why the hell not? Okay, now I'm just waiting for an opportune moment to launch our train and it's 153 meters and it should be packing pretty decent amount of passengers. As soon as this one clears I will be considering launching our brand new train and then we'll read up a little bit on history of the 442 Atlantic. So let's put it New Haven <coughs> to Memphis Express. Okay, and let's get ready to follow it the moment it leaves the depot. <laughs> and as our mogul happily chugs along, our brand new Atlantic is already firing its engine. And there we go. Let's take a look at it. Wow, look at it. Isn't it majestic? I love the Atlantic model. It's just beautiful. Okay, some read up on the Atlantic. Under the white location for the classification of steam locomotives by the wheel arrangement 442 represents a configuration of four leading wheels on two axles, usually in a leading boogie with a single pivot point, four powered and coupled driving wheels on two axles and two trailing wheels on one axle, usually in a trailing truck which supports a part of the weight of the boiler and the firebox and gives it a class improvement, gives the class its main improvement over the 440. This wheel arrangement is commonly known as Atlantic type, although it's some also sometimes called a Milwaukee or a 442 Milwaukee after the Milwaukee road which employed it in high-speed passenger working. While the wheel arrangement and the Nime Atlantic would come to fame in the first passenger service competition between the railroads in the United States by the mid-1895, the tank locomotive version of the 442 Atlantic type first made its appearance in the United Kingdom in 1880 when William Adams designed the first one-class 442 of T of London, Tilbury and Southern Railway. The 442 is a tank locomotive equivalent of the 442 tender locomotive but with the frame extended to allow for the fuel bunker behind the cab. This necessitated an addition of trailing trucks supporting the additional weight at the rear of the locomotive. Uh, at such tank version, the 442 wheel arrangement appeared earlier in the tender version. The tender version of the 442 originated in the United States, evolving the less stable 242 Columbia type wheel arrangement, but was built especially for the mainline passenger services, and we are using our for a passenger service as well. One advantage of the type over its predecessor, 440, the American, type was that the trailing wheels allowed larger and deeper firebox to be placed behind the driving wheels. 
The first use of the 442 wheel arrangement for a tender locomotive was used on the experimental double firebox locomotive built on the design of George Strong at the Hinckley Locomotive Works in 1888. The locomotive was not successful and was scrapped soon afterwards, in, as in 1894, for the use on the Atlantic City Line of the Philadelphia and Reading Railway. Baldwin's ideas on the 442 tender locomotives were soon, soon copied in the United Kingdom, initially by Henry Ivatt uh, of the Great Northern Railway, with his GNR Class 1 Klondike Atlantic of 1898. These were quickly followed by John Spinnell Class 7, known as High Flyer, for the Lancastershire and Yorkshire Railway. And the usages span from Austria, Austro-Hungary, Belgium, Germany, India, Japan, Mozambique, South Africa, United Kingdom, etc, etc. Okay, so that's enough about the Atlantic. Now let's back, get back into our game and Let's see how it's chug chugging along. And it's chugging along beautifully with a top speed of 73 <clears throat> kilometers an hour, although it should pull significantly more, but I believe the top speed for those uh, wagons is around 75. So, oh, and we're passing just over our mag. That's beautiful. Now, I'm looking to Houston, and I'm thinking I would really like to be connecting more cities because I want the road, I want to have a main line going Houston, Savannah, New Haven, Memphis, and then Allentown. So, okay, 483, that's a healthy profit. And look, almost in the few years that we were running, it almost started to paying for itself. So, back to the mission for today, I want to be connecting Gresham or Gresham. I have no, don't know how to pronounce it, so please don't hold it against me. Okay. And I want to connect it by the way of Houston. We also have some industries and as you can see, it is a little bit of a higher incline. So that's something that we will need to take into the consideration. Okay. Residential zones over here and here I am thinking it's safe to assume that we will be building with a terminal station because it's simply the end of the map. So, end of the line, I mean, it makes sense. The only question is where do I want to put it? And I would almost, you see, I would almost like to put it right smack into the middle of the town because that would give us some much needed reachability. Two buildings removed. Hmm. Yeah, thinking about it, that might not be such a bad idea. Okay, committed. Single track, yeah, sure. I might want to double track that actually. Tenery, no, second street connection, yes. Thinking about it, if I have one line going to the Houston for the main line, I might want to have one like north-south type line and in that case I think it's prudent to future proof it by having two connections. So let's connect the second road here. Okay and now we want to be starting to build track towards Houston. Let's see how do we tackle that one. Shall we just connect it directly? Oh yeah, this is, this is, I mean, love it. It's just amazing. Your default construction style even leaves me baffled. Okay, 630k, that sounds more plausible actually. And you're intersecting this road here. And I don't want to be making bumps in the road, so I'll... I watch like numerous um, videos from Colonel, Fa Colonel Failure and he always disconnects the road. So I'm actually thinking I might want to disconnect the road first. Hmm. Yeah, let's 
temporarily cancel this for the time being and just remove this itsy bitsy section of the road which is in our way and then we'll we will always reconnect it later I mean it's no big deal yeah I think this will be good enough and now we can reconnect it I don't want to bother too much about being the cheapest route I just want the route to have good speed and clearly that's what's happening here can I raise it? Hmm. Not bad, but not ideal either. Steel bridge. Yeah. No. Okay. Maybe if I lower it a little bit. Yeah, actually that gave me even a better price quote. Okay. Definitely, I don't see the downside. Okay, it's a little bit dug in, but hey, which track isn't? The one is a little bit higher above. Hmm, decisions, decisions. <clears throat> you know what? I think I'm gonna go with this one. And by this one, I mean probably that one. Yeah, committed. Okay. Now, of course, I want to double track it as if it was ever a question directly to the second line come on don't give me the terrain alignment collision really now that's interesting so one track is in the way of the second track wow you know what i'll just connect it like this see no problems Now let's reconnect the road, medium or small country road, construction not possible, I assure you construction very much is possible, how about this, huh? We connect, we make a small bridge and you are all hunky dory happily chugging along, what do you think? I think that looks nice. I don't want to be severing main connections because then the game will only start complaining about it. Okay. Let's put a diamond crossing here. 120 kilometers an hour down the crossing, that's nice. And of course the construction is not possible because yes. Ah, uh, this is my favorite part of the game. Trying to explain to the game what I really want and, and they it gives me like 10,000 reasons why I shouldn't have it. Okay, let's make a short diamond crossing. From my experience, short diamond crossings work better for some reason, as you can see. Okay, some signals. One here. And one here. And we just need to put them all over the place so that our trains can keep clearing those signals and continuing them. Of course, at a reasonable distance, we don't want them every 200 meters or something. Mm, I mean, this comes especially in handy when you have multiple trains running on the same line, and otherwise you would get, you know, hiccups, stops, and all that jazz. And look, we have already some passengers waiting in Houston, but I guess, yeah, Houston has been already working at the peak efficiency for some time. Okay, let's put another diamond crossing. Don't give me the too much slope or construction not possible. Come on, for once in your life, give me a quote and do it. Wow, that actually worked. Hmm. 
Okay. You don't won't see me complaining. Uh, no. A little bit here. I don't want to be blocking any exits. Sure. And I sometimes wonder what the hell I was thinking. But okay. Okay, I mean, this is post-commentary, clearly. I made a couple of episodes in one go, and then I had to split them according to what's going on. So this will be a shorter episode, guys. Followed by another shorter, followed by a very long one. So, yeah. Houston, Savannah, Houston. And then after Houston, we just want to be putting Gresham. And then it goes back to Houston. So we're just upgrading the current line and I think that's a fair deal. But I think we would maybe need additional train. So let's buy another train, but this time I won't be buying the expensive Atlantic one, but I'll be buying a Baldwin one. And the reason, uh, basically the consolidation, and the reason for me doing so is until our passenger services picks up, I just want to up the frequency without increasing the cost too much. So I am using older locomotives, but then again I don't need to care that much. Once they start making me enough profit, then I will be of course upping the tempo and having... yeah. Okay, so... I have no idea where is other train. I think it's over there at Savannah. Hmm. Oops. Ah, yeah, it's now at the Savannah. I may, might want to wait to just make sure that they're not going one after each other. Okay. Leaving the depot. And I have to organize obviously the commuter services around Gresham, although to be fair it has a very very nicely connected everything. So yeah. Too much curvature. Really? How about this then? Works? You won't complain? That's nice. Okay. I do want to have a bus route going around. Despite the station having fairly good coverage, I mean the towns will expand and I want to make sure that I'm accounting for it. So I almost build the commuter services in each and every town without exceptions. The only thing is that I have to think about later on how to upgrade them. So Gresham. One stop immediately beside the station. One stop over here. Yeah, vehicles drive on the right. Remember that. Then we want one station here and one station here I mean interesting four-stop bus route I think it should be enough to get people to circulate now we need a bus depot new line we will call this one C9 because it's commuter 9 I'm thinking of actually departing from this labeling because uh, it's 
tedious in terms of how many lines you have. If you delete them, there it's not really that robust. So, okay, yeah, I was forgot the name of the town. Sorry, Gresham. Where's my C9 route? Ah, there it is. C9. Gresham commuter or central. And we can select this lime green or light green actually. I think it will work well. Okay. So let's add station 12th Street, Miller Street, Jackson Street, and 2nd Street. Sure. Buy a couple of Macs and we will be chugging on our merry way. I think two should suffice. And set the line. Gresham Central. Awesome. Road vehicle 25. Let's do a little ride along. And the cars have started to appear. After all, it's, it is 1911. So not many people have cars. And this one clearly went into the garage, which doesn't exist. I think we should be turning right here. And the turkey is ever present. Or no, we will be continuing right ahead. I see, so it's the bus spacing thingy that's doing. So you are probably going for the second stop while this, the other one is going for the first one. Oh, I get it. Well, that's smart. Hotel, shop, liquor store, cafe. Well, 1911, that should be the time of prohibition, so... Liquor should be hard to come by. And we see the plume stack of our train. As it has arrived. Watch it! Yeah, the train has arrived to the station and leaving. But people have still not picked up on the utility of the bus services. They're just casually walking along. Okay, well, we'll need to teach them and I mean, obviously, we'll need to start distributing some goods and then the towns will grow and everything will be hunky-dory. Okay, that is pretty much when it comes to Gresham. So, you know what, guys? I'm thinking I'm gonna call this for this episode right here because the next one uh, thematically should be going in the other direction and would be for mostly going around St. Petersburg and others so I'm just gonna give you a short hint here yeah so uh, we'll wrap it up thank you very much for watching like if you like hit subscribe for more transport fever content and I will see you all in the next episode until then thank you very much for watching this is Gromforks Signing off.